Hi everybody, welcome to your lecture on RNA and transcription. First, we've been working with DNA and how DNA replicates within the nucleus, and everything we've been doing has been inside the nucleus at this point. Now, that message needs to leave the nucleus and go out into the cytoplasm and make a protein. So how's it going to direct the cell's activity if the DNA can't leave the nucleus? It's too big. Um, it will not fit out of the nuclear pores. So it is going to send a messenger, and that messenger we call messenger RNA or mRNA. DNA contains the code for making protein, but like I said, it cannot leave the nucleus, so RNA has to help out and actually make the proteins on the ribosomes. So what does RNA stand for? Ribonucleic acid. It is the molecule that controls the production of proteins for the cell, and a strand of RNA is made of repeating units or monomers called nucleotides, just like in DNA. So what makes up a nucleotide? It's composed of a sugar, a phosphate, and a nitrogenous base, just like in DNA. However, the sugar in um, ribonucleic acid is ribose, whereas in DNA, it's deoxyribonucleic acid, and the sugar is deoxyribose. So what the difference is actually here, the sugar ribose has one more oxygen than the sugar deoxyribose. Deoxyribose is literally deoxygenated ribose. It lost one oxygen. It's deoxygenated. Um, so that is the difference between the sugars. In ribose, it um, has an extra oxygen. And the nitro nitrogenous bases, if you look uh, below, you have A, U, C, and G. The U stands for uracil, and it replaces the base thymine. So the three main differences between RNA and DNA um, is that RNA is single-stranded, whereas DNA is the double-stranded. We call it the double helix. RNA has ribose sugar instead of deoxyribose, and RNA has uracil instead of thymine. You know, if you ever see a U anywhere on the molecule as um, one of the bases, you are looking at an RNA molecule. And if you ever see a T, you are looking at DNA. The main differences here are that DNA is double-stranded, whereas RNA is single-stranded. DNA contains deoxyribose sugar, whereas RNA contains ribose. DNA contains thymine, RNA contains uracil, and DNA stays in the nucleus, whereas RNA can leave the nucleus out of the nuclear pores and go into the cytoplasm. Mes there is messenger RNA, mRNA, transfer RNA, also known as tRNA, or ribosomal RNA, rRNA. Messenger RNA is the message. It is the long strand that's made as the the, from the pattern of the DNA template, um, and it's what is made that contains the entire message that the DNA had on it to make this specific protein. So messenger RNA is the message. It's a single strand, uncoiled, um, and it is going to be your pattern. It's going to be the instructions for assembling your um, amino acids in a row to, con uh, to make a protein. The tRNA is the molecule that's pictured there in the lower right-hand corner, and it is the transfer RNA. It carries amino acids to the ribosome. The amino acid is going to sit there on the very top of the molecule, and at the bottom you have an anticodon. An anticodon is a set of three um, nucleotides that are going to be the um, matching pairs, the complementary base, to the codon or the message on the mRNA. So if the mRNA had CCC on it, then the tRNA would contain GGG, and that would be the complement. Ribosomal RNA, or rRNA, is um, just a globular form, and it makes up the structure of the ribosome. So the ribosome is just rRNA and, and protein. This is a picture of messenger RNA. Like I said, it's single-stranded. It has It's made of the nucleotides with the bases, adenine, uh, guanine, cytosine, 
um, and uracil. Actually, um, a way to remember which bases are, are contained in RNA is that it, it makes the acronym GUAC. So if you think of guacamole, G-U-A-C, G-U-A-C are the same as the bases in RNA, guanine, uracil, adenine, and cytosine. The messenger RNA carries copies of instructions for assembling amino acids into proteins. This is the tRNA with the anticodon at the bottom, so it's just three nucleotides, um, and the amino acid at the top, which um, is depicted there. And during the protein construction, the t uh, transfer RNA brings the amino acids into the ribosome and, and leaves them behind, helps to form that polypeptide chain. Remember, amino acids are hooked together by peptide bonds. And so polypeptide is, poly means many. Peptide is referencing those peptide bonds. So you have many amino acids in a row that are connected together with peptide bonds. So that is just a polypeptide is um, a, a protein. This is a ribosome, picture of the ribosomal RNA. You'll notice that the ribosome is two different colors. It is made up of two different uh, subunits. You have this lower uh, unit um, and this upper uh, subunit that will clamp around the messenger RNA. And it basically makes up the factory that um, will end up bringing, reading the uh, mRNA and bringing in the tRNAs um, to produce the protein. So the ribosome is the protein making factory of the cell. It can be either free floating or located on the endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum specifically. It's called rough because it has ribosomes all over it. So it looks bumpy. This is a picture of the rough endoplasmic reticulum um, under a mic uh, microscope. You can see the folds in the membrane with all of the dots around it, and those are um, the dots on the outside are ribosomes. So we're talking today about transcription specifically. Transcription is the process of taking the message on DNA and making the messenger RNA. So it's taking the DNA message and writing it down. When you transcribe something, you're writing it down um, in RNA language. So we're taking it and making a new language. Our next lecture, we're going to talk about translation, which is taking that message and actually making the end product, which is a protein. So transcription is when DNA is copied in the form of RNA. And it is the, the first process is called transcription. The process begins at a section of DNA called a promoter. The promoter is also known a lot of times as the Tata box because it is T A T A A A A um, on one side, then it would be A T A T T T T on the other. So that um, segment the of DNA when you have that uh, message, the Tata box, um, that's where it tells the enzymes to connect and start making the um, RNA molecule. The process of making mRNA from a single strand of DNA uh, is called transcription, and the nitrogen bases in RNA always bond to their complement on the DNA strand. So adenine would bond to uracil, uh, and guanine binds, binds to cytosine. Remember we said that uracil replaces thymine in the RNA strand. Now, if you have thymine on the DNA strand, um, it bonds to adenine still, T to A, but A would bond to uracil, A to U. And G always binds to C. G to C, whether you have DNA, RNA, no matter what, it's G to C. Um, the difference is the A to U or the A to T. A to T in DNA, A to U when you're going to RNA. So the first step in transcription is the enzyme RNA polymerase unzips the complementary strand of DNA into two single strands and then finds RNA nucleotides to bond uh, to the single strand of DNA. And as they're bonding and coming together, the molecule rezips, the DNA molecule rezips behind it um, as the 
enzyme RNA polymerase kind of rides down the DNA strand. It'll continue unzipping at the front and it'll rezip at the back and recoil. And the mRNA strand or the messenger RNA strand will fall off. Um, it binds to the complements, so it's copying the message and then they come off. So the mRNA is its own separate entity. It doesn't stay connected to the DNA. So the mRNA is released and the two DNA strands rezip. This is another picture of that occurring. The big circle is the RNA polymerase. We talked about um, the enzyme polymerase with DNA as well. There's a DNA polymerase that helps in the process of DNA replication and it binds the DNA nucleotides um, to the unzipped strands or the free strands uh, to create new molecules of DNA. But RNA polymerase binds RNA nucleotides that are uh, free floating within the nucleus. Um, if you would like to see an animation of transcription, this uh, yellow link down here, it's called transcription animation where it says that you can click on that and you can actually watch the process of transcription happen. Um, now you can only do this if you have downloaded my PowerPoint through my vision course and are one of my students. So the genetic code, the genetic code is the language of mRNA instructions and the code is written using the bases A, U, C, and G. Um, this code is universal among organisms. DNA is a universal code uh, among all organisms. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, so once something works, uh, evolution tends to keep using that same process if, if it works. Um, and so the process for us for making different proteins and everything is going to be the same um, as the process if it's occurring in uh, your dog, any other animal, um, vegetables, I mean the same um, codes that are used to make the amino acid proline in us would be made, the same language, the same codes would be used to make the amino acid pro, proline in a, in a banana. Um, this code is universal among all life. A codon consists of three uh, consecutive nucleotides on mRNA that, specific, uh, that specify a specific amino acid. So uh, the codon wheel that we use or the codon chart that we use a lot of time to find out which amino acid we have coding for, that's talking about three nucleotides from the mRNA strand, specifically the mRNA strand. Where people get confused is that the tRNA, the transfer RNA, it has an anti-codon, and it is the one that actually has the amino acid on it. Um, but the tRNA is the opposite of the uh, mRNA as far as what it has on it. So if the mRNA has AUG, um, the, the tRNA with the anti-codon would have UAC on it. But when we use our tools to find out which amino acid is connected to that tRNA, we're going to be looking up the codon AUG to find the correct amino acid. If you were to use the anticodon instead of UAC, you would find the wrong or incorrect amino acid um, and, and you just will not have the protein uh, assembled correctly. So if you were to transcribe this DNA strand and turn it into RNA, which go ahead and take a moment, just pause the video um, and write down the DNA strand and see if you can make it into RNA, remembering that a T in DNA bonds to an A in uh, RNA. An A uh, in DNA bonds to a U in RNA, C to G and G to C. Okay, I hope you took a second to write that down, see if you got it correct. This is the answer. So hopefully you got that right. If you did not, look back over and see um, which base pair rule um, you missed. If it was A to T, um, A to U, G to C, figuring out where you went wrong there, remembering that the RNA strand, the one in blue on the bottom, will have U's in it. There will be no T's. So if there are T's anywhere in your RNA strand, um, 
that's where most people make their mistake because they're used to replicating the DNA, which does contain uh, T's. Have a great night.